Once, there was a princess who was the epitome of beauty. A bull appeared to her and so enchanted her with its timid behaviour that she mounted onto it. The bull then ran, carrying her from modern Lebanon across the sea to Crete, and it revealed itself to be Zeus, the leader of the Greek pantheon. Zeus did what Zeus does. The girl then disappears from written texts, but her name, Europa, stayed, and it formed the name of a whole continent. But what exactly is Europe? Who are Europeans? Where is Europe? What makes someone a European? The name Europe is from the ancient Greek Euris Ops, meaning broad face, referring to the whole known world. But Herodotus had divided the world into three parts. There was Africa to the south, then there was the River Nile, then Asia, then the River Don, west of which was Europe. But being European was not an identity. It was a geographical grouping. A person living here may have known themselves to be European by fact, but they certainly wouldn't consider that to be part of their identity. In the 8th century, Alcuin, the court scholar of Charlemagne, refers to Europa as the Christian world that submitted to the Pope. The British Isles, France, Christian parts of Germany, the Alps, and northern and central Italy were Europe. This view never appeared outside of Alcuin's writings, but this is the first instance of a European identity. At around the same time, Charlemagne was crowned emperor by the Pope. He was not an emperor of Europe, but an emperor of all of this grouping of Christians. This informs later concepts of European identity and community. 653 years later, the Ottomans took Constantinople, and reports flooded Europe of Christian artefacts being thrown into the streets. The King of Bohemia had written the Treaty on the Establishment of Peace Throughout Christendom. This was a pan-European Christian League, a grouping of Christian kings and lords who agreed to settle disputes exclusively through peaceful means. This would leave European military forces united against the abominable Turk. But this was met with lukewarm response. The Pope hated the King of Bohemia, George's plans of a European council died after he was excommunicated in 1466. In the 1500s, the Habsburg control over the continent united the Christian world as Europa Regina, or Queen Europe. It is the first map of Europe that separated it from the rest of the world, and it personifies Europe as one united individual, symbolising unity under one dynasty. From Iberia down past Moscow is united by Habsburg control or Habsburg influence. The crown that Queen Europe wears is heavily associated with Charlemagne, linking to him as a mythical king of Europe, from which the Habsburgs had inherited their empire. Habsburg power declined, but European identity remained. Europe was then defined by division rather than unity. A balance of power meant that powers, both major and minor, would be kept in check by other similarly sized powers. This nearly worked, except for when it didn't. Napoleon crowned himself emperor in 1800, and like the Habsburgs, he emphasised his inheritance of Charlemagne's realm. His coat of arms features a hoop crown, which was very similar to his own crown, which he himself had named the Crown of Charlemagne. Then the balance of power worked again, until it didn't, again. And after a couple of minor conflicts, there was a sense that there needed to be a United States of Europe. The respect of local identities that came with the balance of power, but with the collaboration of a council. The Council of Europe from 1949 was the first creation, but this was deemed not enough, giving birth naturally to the Eurovision Song Contest in 1956. In 1957, the Treaty of Rome created the European Economic Community, which grew to become the European Union with the Maastricht Treaty in 1992. European identity is overwhelmingly tied to the EU, which today aim for European integration. What if a nation decides it doesn't want to be integrated into a political European state, or that it doesn't want to be economically tied to a transnational union? That country would find itself ostracised from the European community. Is it right? for politicians and economists to decide who is and isn't European. The question comes down to what you think Europe is. Is it just a landmass west of the River Don, or is it an identity? What does that identity represent? Is it an economic one? A political one? Is it just a singing competition? Let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. Do you have any videos that you'd like to see? Let me know in the comments. And thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing.